honored today to have with us uh, a legend in country music, uh, <laughs> Mr. George Canyon. Yeah, Mr. Hey George everybody. Canyon, everybody. Yeah, it's, uh, Thanks for coming, George. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me here. Oh, Yang Yangaroo. Yes. I love the name, Yangaroo. man. There's just something about it. Just kind of can't forget it. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably one of the points of it, I think. It's I think so. Something yeah. that stands out, you know. It's like, like my email. Really I made it as simple as I could so I'd never forget it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Still forget passwords. But. Yes. It's as, a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. I appreciate you being here. So, um, so there's a new album out recently. Yeah, South Side of Heaven dropped May 25th, so just last Friday there. So and just uh, last Friday, so this yeah. is the first week. It's the first week, and uh, it's going so surprisingly well. I'm I'm really uh, blown away, and get the greatest fans in the world, so it, it helps a lot. Good. So it's it's going well so far. Yeah, it shocked yeah. me to be. We had number one um, album uh, in the country charts uh, when it came out day one, and I I still kind of still shocked by it all. Mm -hmm. Well, still shocked by it all, even after um, 28 years. 28 years <laughs> yeah. and yeah let's see if i can remember this all this might be tough multiple juno awards yeah ecma awards yeah, they, ccma awards that's for my team a socan award i celebrate my team with all the awards i i'm so blessed to get to make music i just it's all it's all part of it's it, all, it's it is i have the easy job the team around me unbelievable mm -hmm. yeah well i'm sure they probably you know have have some more uh uh, you know, be have some more positive things to say about your influence in that. Maybe role as some well, days. <laughs> some of them some are, days, not so much. Some day. Yeah. Okay. Well, that anyway, might not those be are that easy are, to work with sometimes. Yeah, those are those are great accomplishments. Um, yeah, we're so very yeah. blessed. You know, it's 28 year career. I've had 18, 19 records now. 12 like contemporary country records, mm -hmm. and I just um, I'm very grateful. You know, to have the fans we have at home in Canada. Um, I mean, my wife and I live in Canada, you know, raised our kids in Canada. Um, I'm just really honored to get to be able to have this career and, you know, be at home in Canada. It means a lot to me. I was always told, like, 28 years ago, I'd have to leave my own country to, to have a career, and I just always thought that was kind of wrong. Why is that? Yeah. 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 So I was very blessed to, to have this. I'm, I'm speaking like my career is over. I'm very blessed <laughs> to have this career, career not over. Right. Yeah. You've proved it can be done. You, know, you, you can make it. Oh, there's, yeah, and a lot before me have as well. Yeah. Um, just we're really, really uh, honored and, and blessed to have this career for sure. Yeah. Okay, so, so tell us more about South Side of Heaven. So it was. Um Two years in the making, South Side of Heaven. And um, it's kind of one of those projects where it's the first time my band and I, uh, my road band, we went live off the floor in the studio. That's the old way of recording. Mm -hmm. And we had so much fun doing it. And there's a certain magic that happens that way. And um, it happened on this record a couple of times, and I was just, you know, we were tickled pink for, for that to, to go on and be able to record that way. And then um, picking songs and writing songs for it, we, we wanted to have a wee bit of a 90s vibe. Um, I really miss 90s country, and because uh, I, I cut my teeth on it, playing so many bars. And so we, um, you know, we, we kind of not thematically followed that idea, but we had that idea in the back of our head more the, the feel and the sound kind of the vibe in some of the songs the and then the there's a big song on there um and my buddy bruce guthrow it was his hit back mm -hmm. in the late 90s a falling which i still think is one of the best written and performed songs uh in canada of all time and i i wanted to recut that song for a long time and this record gave me that opportunity and then bruce was kind enough to jump on and guest as a, a vocalist on the song so that's a very special song for me. It took a long time to get through uh, in the studio um, vo doing the vocals because I kept getting choked up and every time I'd sing it. But then a Tim Hortons commercial choked me up, so I, you know, <laughs> it's sure happens. This is what happens. Right, but you got through it anyway. I did, yeah. yeah. In the end, you just kind of, <clears throat> you know, bite yeah. your tongue a few times and get through. I have not really been able to get through it properly live yet. Mm. I still get choked up in the last, uh, the last refrain of the song, but. Yeah, it must be tough, but but I, I really like it. I like the the sound and feel of, of the live off the floor recording. Yeah, it works. Um, yeah, and I, I especially like your your rendition of uh, the late great Stomp and Tom Connors <laughs> yeah. hockey song. Well, the hockey song, um, hockey is a huge part of my life. Uh -huh. um, some people know I'm. Uh, I just finished my fourth season um, with with the Calgary Flames as the anthem singer. I'm still waiting for them to put me in goal, but I am the ninth string, so you know, it's a lot of goalies have to go down before I go in. Yeah. And uh, it's such a big honor being a part of the organization and um, 
so hockey, I play twice a week still. It's, it's an important part of my life, always has been. Mm -hmm. When they asked me if I would be a part of the 50th anniversary uh, Stomp and Tom record, I, I was really choked up. I mean, that's a big honor. And to be asked to do the hockey song, mm -hmm. and that to me is, was, was and will always be Canada's second national anthem, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they said, you know, Ole Red Dot, my label, said, why don't we put this on the new record? And I thought, that's a great idea. So we'll get it on there. Yeah, I, I like it. It sounds, it sounds great. It Thanks. Sounds awesome. Yeah, let, let's go back back to the early days when you were first, when you were an emerging um, country artist coming wow. out of Nova Scotia. A long time ago. Was there a, a defining moment, something that happened when, you know, it, it really clicked when you thought that, you know, I can well, make a career out of this? Sort of. Um, I was uh, basically uh, going to university at Santa Fe mm -hmm. and um, was in a musical, uh, Camelot, and this band, local band, came and saw me. I had no idea. And then they approached me and said, hey, we saw you uh, doing this musical. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind, would you audition for our band? And I'm like, oh, sure, that'd be fun during university. I was taking my pre-med. I was on my way to med school. And so I, <laughs> I auditioned. And I don't know what it was because I played music my whole life. There was just this innate burning in my stomach that I needed to do this. So we went out on the road that summer. And I'll never forget calling my dad, God rest his soul, and, and saying, uh, Dad, I, I think I'm going to take a year off. I'm not going to go to med school. I'm going to take a year and just go on the road with this band. And <laughs> dad going, oh, that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And um, But we did. And um, the rest is, as they say, history, 28 years later. This is history, right? Yeah. So we, we, at Yangaroo and DMDS, we work with a lot of you know emerging mm -hmm. um, artists, country artists, of yep. course, especially. Um, who are you know trying to, to, to make their way, make a career out of it, um, you know, get on radio for the first time. Yeah. Um, you know, have you you I understand you've done some mentoring of, of yeah, young artists. Yeah, I mean, I, I always um, I always give advice where where I can, just because I made so many mistakes and and you know I've a lot of regrets uh, musically that I wish I would have done this or done this or not done this. Mm -hmm. And there's three things I always say. Uh, the first is faith. The second is persistence. And the third is patience. Mm -hmm. And those three things um, I basically had to really, really work at. Um, faith I had, uh, persistence I had. I was like luggage you could never get rid of. Mm -hmm. But patience I didn't have. And even to this day, there's just, you know, the older you get, you, you learn patience. But as an artist, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to learn because you, you it's your heart, it's your soul, it's who you are, and so you want it to happen so bad, and it's not happening fast enough. Mm -hmm. And I remember all those years ago, just you know, pushing, 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 and just instead of being me, you know, writing and recording me, um, not trying to chase what the hot thing was at the time, um, and just being patient, and it's so easily said, and it's hard to do, but it is mm -hmm. something that um, has paid off uh, leaps and bounds for, for what it's worth to have that patience. Mm -hmm. So you don't make mistakes mm -hmm. because I've made a lot of mistakes in the business because I didn't have patience. Mm -hmm. And so you jump, you do this, you do that. And um, that's basically some of the, the biggest advice I give to, to uh, young artists and that and make music for, for you, like make it for who you are. Mm -hmm. don't, don't try to be the ar an artist you're not because right. um, the fans will see right through that. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like great advice. Faith. Yeah. Persistence and patience. patience. Yeah. Yes. And it, and it, is it important for for you know young artists to understand that you know success won't necessarily happen in a straight line? That there'll be peaks and valleys. Very important. In fact, I always thought I'm being very honest now. <laughs> I always thought once I got a record deal, I that, that means that I made it. it. Yeah. And what I quickly realized is when I did achieve that goal and get a record deal after all those years, I had to work ten times harder and was like, whoa, okay, this is interesting. Um, and so the, what you think is the be all end goal is actually not, and now what I've learned after all these years, the end goal is to create music that A, moves you, B, moves your fans, and C, creates a legacy so that 50, 60, 75 years from now, someone's covering your song and saying, oh, this is an old George Canyon song from 50 years ago, mm -hmm. that legacy um, means a lot, like being able to leave that. And so Johnny Cash, prime example, I'm a huge Johnny Cash fan. Uh, Ring of Fire, one of the shows I played at, it was a six-year-old and her great-grandma. So 92 mm -hmm. and six in the front row 
singing Ring of Fire back to me and both every word. Words. Yeah. And I, I just, that really hit me hard and I went, wow, if I'm so blessed to have a song someday that, that people that can, all those years from now will... They, they will, can transcend generations. Yeah, that's right? just, yeah, that oh man, amazing. that's just amazing, amazing music, so. Charity work has always been an important part of, of, of what you do. I wish I could do what more. You focus on. <laughs> um, so you are a spokesperson for the Canadian Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. JDRF, yeah, yep. proudly so. As a type mm -hmm. 1 diabetic, um, oh. I've been type 1 for 33 years, mm -hmm. 34, going on 34. And um, when I was 14 and I was diagnosed, no one, no one stood up and said, you know, they were a celebrity and they had type 1 diabetes. That just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't have anybody to look to. So I knew if I ever had a platform, I would use it. And uh, the good Lord gave me a platform uh, many years ago. And so for about 15 years now, we've been working with type 1 diabetic kids and their families and uh, really trying to get the message across. If you control your disease, you live your dreams. And it's mm -hmm. type 1 diabetes, not type 2. And I say that because I've talked to type 1 diabetic kids who are literally in tears because they're teased because you know their friends are saying, well, why don't you just go on a diet and exercise and don't eat, don't eat all that junk and then you wouldn't be diabetic. And, and it, it's, it's completely different, right? Mm -hmm. Our pancreas doesn't make insulin. So if we don't take insulin, you know, and, and it, it's so important that we get the word out, the, diff the huge difference between type one diabetes and type two diabetes. Right. But working with those kids fills me up. And I tell you, they, they're amazing. I've been a pilot for 13 years now. I was told when I was 14, I would never, ever, because I wanted to be in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I was told I'd never be in the Air Force and I would never fly airplanes. Would so that be the same case today? If No, if, no, you know. I'm a pilot, for th legally a pilot. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. I go take airplanes and fly them around. No, I'm yeah. legally a pilot. I've been a pilot for 13 years. We're, we're working with Transport Canada currently. Um, we got them to allow us to have a Category 3 medical, which lets us hold a private pilot's license. Mm -hmm. But now we're working with them to get a Category 1R, which is a Category 1 restricted, so that um, a Type 1 diabetic can become a commercial airline pilot. Because right now there are Type 1s that are commercial pilots, but they were commercial pilots before, before the they were Type 1. Well, there's no difference. They're Type 1 now. It's the same disease. Mm -hmm. And so we're working with Transport uh, diligently with uh, Minister Mark Garneau and his offices. Um, to to get this worked in. So these kids, if they want to be a commercial airline pilot, they're there. If they want to be a teacher, they're there, a doctor, a lawyer, police officer, anything they want to do in life. They control their disease, they live their dreams, and that's, that's the most important part. Mm -hmm.